Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. This is about making a sports poster and this is version 2 of this tutorial. In the first version, which I'll add a link to in the description for this video, I'm trying to recreate this Photoshop tutorial which was done by PSD Dude and I was trying to get it as close as I could following all the instructions in this tutorial um, again I will add a link to this in the video description and to make this video uh, picture here I downloaded as many of these um, items that help make up this image not all of them are free a couple of the items I had to sort of get from Pixabay but I used as many of these as I could to get as close as I could to that. Now this video will be looking at trying to do something similar but using totally different images all that I got free from Pixabay so if I come back to photo this is the end result of the first video and it was as close as I could get and, and we are now going to be aiming for something like this um, using different images like I said and trying to get different results because using different images from the one in that tutorial you're going to have to adapt some of the blend modes um, and other things like that to get it to work because like the Stephen Gerrard picture in the tutorial he's wearing like a dark red um, strip whereas the lady in this picture that I got from Pixabay is wearing a white strip so like the blend modes might be slightly different depending on the colour of the strip that the person's wearing and you know another considerations like that so this is a look at trying to get a very similar result to the PSD do a dude tutorial I'm going to use lot some of the same sort of steps and procedures and maybe some of the colours are going to be the same but I'm going to have to adapt things differently as I go along which is what you may have to do with your particular images if you're not going to sort of stick hard and fast to the PSD dude tutorial. So this is just really a look at why you'd have to sort of adapt things differently from a tutorial to get the result that you personally are after. So let me, I'll reset everything and I will be back in a minute. Okay, I've reset things in Affinity Photo and I'm just going to have a quick look at the files that I'm going to be using. All of these I got from pixabay.com and I will add links to them in the description for this video. Now these ones I picked because they were similar, as best as I could find, that were similar to the ones in the PSD Dude tutorial, you know, be it particles or a uh, flare or coloured lines or a texture and things like that. Um, I will be using, I, I've not tried this out yet, but I will be using a different picture of two ladies playing football rather than the one that I used in the first video, which may mean that the blending modes may be different and I will have to adapt that when I get there. So I've opened all of the images in Affinity Photo and unlike the first tutorial, whereas I made a document and then I sort of adapted the size of them to fit that document like it was in the tutorial. This time I'm just going to work with the size of the main image in my opinion which is the stadium and this stadium image is 4000 by 3000 pixels so I'm going to start a new document with 4000 by 3000 pixels and this is going to be the basis of the whole project. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the raindrop image. So I'm just going to right click on this, copy it, come back to the main project, come to edit and paste. Now I'll zoom out here because if I come to the move tool this image is much bigger than the background that we are working on. So I will just hold down the control key and resize it a bit and then I'll just 
it doesn't matter too much about keeping proportions in this so I'll just resize this how I want so I'll just move that in a bit about there press control and zero to zoom out and then I'm going to change the blend mode of this to overlay and lower the opacity down to 50% so they're just sort of there slightly visible in the background so I don't need this range up image so I can now shut that one so the next one is going to be the stadium so I'll just right click that and do copy and then edit and paste because this was the size that I set for the actual whole project I don't have to do any alterations on this so I can now change the blend mode of this to multiply just so you can see some of those raindrops starting to come through in the background there hopefully so let me just close that stadium picture and next one I want is the colored lines one which I think is that one so I'll just again right click this copy come back to the image and then edit and paste on the move tool so and this time I'm going to alter the, how this looks swivel it around change the size so this time I will hold down the control key as I do this and I'm just going to lower the opacity slightly for now just so I get an, an idea of how this looks within the stadium maybe just increase the size slightly yeah so it looks like it's swooping into the stadium and coming off to there so let me put the opacity back up to a hundred percent and then I'm going to change the blend mode of this also to multiply uh, sorry I mean screen um, it was multiply in the first video it's screen in this video because I'm having to change the blend mode differently because I want to get rid of those black areas that are outside the colored lines so this is the effect that I want with this particular image and then I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer and I'm just do that by clicking on this icon, item icon down here and it will add the layer mask to this image and then I'm going to get the paintbrush tool make sure I've got black as my color I'm going to lower the hardness of this down to zero and I'll just reduce the opacity down to about 50% roughly and then I just need to increase the size of the brush because what I'm trying to do here is to get rid of this straight line around here so if I just paint on the mask and I'll just slowly fade that straight line where those colors just suddenly sort of hit the crowd There's a couple there as well just to fade them in and blend them into the picture a bit better that one's alright because it comes right off the screen that one goes off the screen that way so that's not a problem yes yeah, so I think that will do it's working okay there so let me just click and highlight back on the top layer here and then we just need the image of the footballers let me get rid of that I don't need that one anymore and the footballers are that one I believe there we go now I'm going to use the selection brush tool for this let me just increase the brush size 
make sure we're on ed yes now this is only going to be a, f a rough selection and if you were doing this yourself you would may want to take a bit more time so I would advise you taking a bit more time and effort than I am going to do on this right let's subtract a few bits like this grass in there Lower the brush size and get that bit of grass in there and oh, I've got to add that bit down there and then subtract that bit of shadow all right I think I've got all the main areas and this is only for demonstration purposes so like I said you would do a better job of selecting your own images if you're doing this yourself and I'm just going to quickly refine this a bit and then maybe just get a bit of the hair there and there apply and then I'm going to press Control and J to put that selection on its own layer and press Control and D to get rid of the selection area if I turn off the background then you can see we have the two footballers selected so I'll just right click that layer copy come back to a project and then edit and paste. Come to the move tool and then it's a case of resizing holding down the control key and positioning this where you think it will work best on your particular stadium or image. Yes yeah, so that looks quite good there. Okay when I did this before as I said the, the girl was just wearing an all white strip and the blend mode I used on that was darken so I might have to adapt the blend mode can, to work out the difference between these two colored strips let's try darken first of all it's because I see on, see on this one in darken I'm losing the girl and the white strip altogether so let's go through them and find one that looks okay Um, this one's that's hard light, it's not too bad. So depending on your image, it was depend on which blend mode you want. Luminosity makes it look very black and white, but it's, it does work quite well actually. Colour, average. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a case of either um, average, I could average and then duplicate it maybe, or go with the black and white image, which I must admit I did quite like the look of. Let's try, let's just try average first of all and then duplicate that and see whether that yeah, so I'll duplicate that again. No, maybe only if I re reduce the opacity of that third one. Yeah, that's a bit better. I reduce that top one down to 22%. So this is what I mean about having to adapt each project with the images you're using. You can't always just stick with the tutorial that's in front of you be it written or video you do need to make some ad adaptations yourself as you go along so I quite like that as it is so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three of those group them together so at some future date I want to move them slightly they will all move together right what I want to do next is something that wasn't in the first video because it was quite a dark picture anyway I just want to sort of darken the edges of this because it's quite a bright picture as it is at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and highlight the layer below and then I'm going to add a pixel layer and that will put that pixel layer in between the layer that was highlighted and the, the, the top layer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to just draw an ellipse that pretty much covers that area and we just move it so it's a bit more centered like so and then I'll come up to the select menu and then invert pixel selection so it is actually the outside that I'm going to be selecting not the inside and then I'm going to come to the paintbrush tool and again we are on black and I'm then going to paint black let me put this opacity up to about 80 odd percent and when you paint when the selection is still going it will only paint in the areas that are selected which is because I inverted it this is the outside it will not paint anywhere on the area that isn't selected so I'm just going to use this to darken the outside area of this image and give me this vignette and, let's, and I'm going to make it all so like a solid black up there Alright, once you're happy with that selection, or painting I should say, I can press Ctrl and D to get rid of the selection. And what I will do is I'll just drop the opacity down just a tad down to about 60% or so. Just so the outside edge is a bit darker. And I'm happy with that. Okay, next I want to do is to add sort of these um, this sort of bokeh effect here. Now I'm doing it now rather than earlier on um, because I, it's I find it easier to position this sort of thing when you have a lot of the main items in place. So although I'm adding it now, I want it to go behind the players and possibly even behind those lines there. So what I will do is I will highlight the stadium picture and then I will copy this layer and then edit and paste that in and that will paste it because it was the stadium layer that was highlighted it will paste it above that and then I'm going to change the opac um, blend mode of this to luminosity and I'm going to reduce its opacity down to about 25% come to the move tool and then it's a case of let me zoom out slightly maybe just repositioning where that is maybe increase that opacity a little bit maybe 30% zoom back in right so that's maybe if I let me try it above those lines move it up yes it might work better above the lines rather than below the lines so 
I personally am quite happy where that is and how that looks but what I will do is again I will add a mask to that come to the paintbrush no, that's the wrong paintbrush and black is still selected and again I'm just going to get rid of these hard lines that may have come from the edges of the picture and just blend that in and I don't necessarily want a lot of it on the crowd down here so I'll take that effect away from there just so I've got some of those that bokker effect in and around those lines where it's more visible right I think that's Yes, I'm happy with that. Let's come off that tool so it's visible. Right, okay, let me just close that picture. I don't need that one anymore. Right, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to add this snow full picture. So let me just copy this. And I'm going to highlight the top picture because I want this layer, this layer to go on top. So edit paste and come to the move tool hold down a control key to resize and reposition which I think is okay there and I'm going to change the blend mode of this to vivid light and then lower the opacity down quite low just down to sort of about 14 15% or so just so it gives a sort of bit of added maybe sort of bokker effect a slightly smaller bokker effect in and around the players and again I'm going to add a mask to that layer Come to the paintbrush tool, still in black, and I'm just going to remove some of that from the players. I just want it on the outside. There we go. I'm not being too precise here. I mean, you could be a bit more precise if you're doing this yourself or you may like the effect on the players right let me just come back and highlight the top layer so I'm happy where that is now now let me sh shut down that image and next I'm going to go with this now in the first video I used a lens flare um, I did a a search for lens flare in Pixabay and I came out with this one which I quite liked because you have all these extra little starry effect on the smaller circles not just the big circle at the top so I'm going to copy that and then edit and paste and like before resize this hold down the control key as I do so and just get that where we want that and just back down this slightly and I'll just I'll put that glow more in the left hand corner over there and change the blend mode to screen so again that will get rid of the the darker areas of the image and then I'm going to lower the opacity down a bit just so say about 40-50 percent like so now this might actually work better behind the player so what I'll do is I'll click and drag this down to 
so there it is behind the players so it's not none of those are affecting the players itself and it is just behind now the only thing is there which is now highlighting the line of the players I don't know if you can see that so I may have to move that back up to the top yeah because that line is now gone so I'll have to again like before add a layer mask up to the paintbrush tool and paint off the effect of that particular layer on the players themselves again I'm not being too precise here just doing this for speed this is why sort of you need to keep an eye on if you do move layers around what effect it has on other layers that you may not have taken into account so that is going to be good enough for that one right so moving on to the next one now th this technically could be the end of the um, tutorial so you could save this and make sure you save it under another name you know, you know one thing I might do is I might darken this particular layer so what I do is I add a, a levels adjustment and click and drag this down into that group there I can just maybe darken that down a bit without affecting anything else there we go I think that's a bit better yeah so you could save that under a new name um, we can then go on to add some of the adjustments that were in the original tutor tutorial and that would be first of all to add a gradient map Let me get rid of this center one and we make click on the first the left hand layer um, node and make this black and then click on the other node at the other end and make that white and then change the blend mode which you can do from down here to soft light and the opacity down to 45 50 percent then the next adjustment was to add a lens filter and to make this a sepia color now this I did by eye I didn't have a particular color choice in mind um, so this will be different from the first video because I'm just guessing a sepia color but I've ended up with 62 43 and 0 0 and then close that down and then add a curves adjustment now again it's just a case of altering this to suit your particular taste and what you want out of the picture it's a case of a uh, I think I want it a bit darker around the outside yeah, that suits my personal taste for that particular image you would have to make the adjustments to suit your tastes and then add a brightness contrast and lower the brightness down to about minus 10 so again at this point you could if you like this how this looks you could save this 
with its own name or you could then carry on and make the last few adjustments which would be to add yet another um, gradient map and then clicking on the left hand side and making this color 87 2 F 2 F and then on the other side making the color F B F D E 6 and changing the blend mode of this to overlay and then add in another lens filter and the color number for this is A 0 C 6 D seven and density is at fifty percent which is what it is so that would be the last of the adjustments in that sense and so what I'll right click the top layer and do merge visible so it will make a single layer that has all of these layers below merge together in one layer and then I'm going to come up to filters sharpen high pass and have a pixel radius of 2 click apply and change the blend mode to overlay just to sharpen those images and this is technically is the actual end of the tutorial in the sense of altering the image um, so you would save this under a new name and this is where you could then add text or other items um, I do have somewhere where is it it's, um, I do have the logo here so let me open this it's a logo for the women's World Cup in France this year so I'll just copy that and paste that in and then come to the move tool and I'll resize this about there And you could tinker with the blend modes for this particular layer or, or any text that you add in but I will leave it like that and that is the end of the tutorial so hopefully you will glean something from this now mainly that just because there is a tutorial that says to do something in A, B, C or D set fashion you can find your own images and adapt that tutorial for your actual um, what you want just in case of working out how to blend them or position them differently to the original tutorial so thank you for watching this and goodbye